Yes, so I'll be talking about this in a room full of experts. What could possibly go wrong? Um, does anyone know what this is? Again, this is you know showing how old you are. <laughs> this is, of course, the internet. This is what you all are working with every day. And this is what the internet has been, and still is. And I'm going to be talking about why it's, after some 30 years, is turning into not this. Let's see how it turns out. And uh, this is me. I like cute robots, so I choose cute robots. Um, I work at Systema Laget, like Maria said. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that is the Swedish state alcohol monopoly. Um, Swedes know what this is. Um, but today, uh, and as System Logs, I work with the digital channels, that's the web, the app, and related stuff. Um, but like Maria said, uh, I'm also, well, today I'm here like in, as myself, as the blogger and uh, as a LinkedInist. Is that a word? It is now. Uh, I post, I write about digital trends, uh, mostly on LinkedIn, but also on Twitter. Uh, and I blog on my sites, and I sort of gather up my my findings from the week there. Uh, and my m probably biggest digital achievement is that I am the only one in the world who has that email address. All you who have a name like me, you know how, how big that is. <laughs> the rest of you don't know. <laughs> so today I'm here as myself, and not just the Um And you will be listening to some speakers with amazing CVs, and what you remember from this is you will start off by listening to a guy who just boasted about his email address in 2018. I'm sure you're extremely impressed already. Back to this. Uh, this is the internet, and what do I mean by that? Uh, this is why librarians were so quick to jump the internet wagon. Because the internet is pretty much a bunch of cards. Lots of cards in the cyberspace, uh, and that was a bit a lot, just like a library. Lots and lots of books, and you know, somewhere you have to find the books. And then they started making these wooden boxes, so you can actually find the lots and lots of books in there. So you can actually go through and flip through them and find you know books based on keywords. You go to the shelf, you find your book, you take your book. Next to the book, there are related books based on what you search for. And if you open the book, you read the book, you'll probably find other related sites you can go to or books you can go to. This is what the internet has always been. We digitized this when we created the internet. Uh, we had lots and lots of cards. And for those of you who are really, really early on the internet, <laughs> that's me and a few here, you can actually collect. They were actually books, like telephone catalogs with all the sites in the world you can flip through. You can flip through all the sites in the world through a book. That's not the case today. Uh, so along came you know, the search companies. Google wasn't the first, but of course, the most known and what we use today. And they gave us the wooden box. A place we can go to, and you can flip through them. If you flip through the, the sites, you can use keywords. And then you go to the shelf, the site. And then you can find other stuff from there. And you'll go, you can go back here and find new stuff. This is what the internet has been for the last 30 years. This is what the internet still is. This is the 1900s in a mobile. Nothing really not that much has changed over the years. And search, again, is a bit li still like this. But we're not using the wooden box anymore, at least not that much. Someone wants to do something, wants to find something, wants to get an answer to something. They do a search, and they end up on a website, or an app, mostly websites. This is what it's been like since you know, the mid-90s. Not too, mu too much has changed there. Um, but I'm going to talk about today what is changing now, what is sort of making this not be the truth anymore. So let's start by eliminating the one thing that Google I've been talking a lot about Google today, of course. Uh, the one thing that Google absolutely doesn't need, which is, of course, the websites. 
Google doesn't need websites. Google has never needed websites. What Google needs is data. The website has been the way we used to be able to communicate with people. Again, we had lots of sites. And you went to the site to do something, find information or buy stuff or whatever. So the internet up to now has looked a bit like this. Anyone from H&M here today? I'll be sending the invoice for doing promotion for them today. Uh, this is what it looks like in the internet context. You have a site, you fill it with content, and then you, of course, you, you make the site appear on Google. You, build, you optimize the site for Google. Uh, you do advertising on Google, but you also do advertising in other channels, like Facebook. Uh, and the end game is get people to the site. Or download an app, but again, a lot go to the site to do stuff. We love our sites. We spend lots and lots of time on our sites. Uh, the customers, on the other hand, don't really share that sentiment. They don't care about our sites. They never cared about our sites. They go to the site because that's the only way to get to the stuff they want to get to. This is a bit like the problem that the physical store is having today. The physical store was the place you went to to do stuff. You had to go there because there was no other way to do it. Now you can do things online. You don't have to go to the physical store anymore. That's why retail is having problems right now. Same for the sites. And the reason is, of course, that there's tons and tons and tons of options today that didn't exist in 94 or even 2004. And like Maria said, you all complete new technologies. You have voice, and you do more and more stuff in the hardware. You do, I search more and more through you know, the internal search on the iPhone rather than go to the sites. Of course, I'm using Google, who apparently are paying like $9 billion to be the default search engine in iOS. That's how important it is to be the default search engine. Um, and we're not just going here to do sort of spend time. We want to do things. We want to buy things. We want to take action. And we can do that in all these places now. And you can do more and more stuff directly in these places. You don't have to sort of go to Facebook and then be directed to a site. You can do stuff on Facebook, on Pinterest, on Instagram, in iMessage. And we don't want to go to a site because, you know, there it takes us a couple of seconds to go to the site. If I can do it where I am, that's much better. Just It's much better to, uh, to sit at home doing my shopping on my screen rather than go to the store. Can we do it? We usually prefer it. So what's happening now, um, of course, since Google and Facebook has realized this, is yes, we have the sites. Um, we still do build them for Google. We promote it on Google. We promote it on Facebook. But more and more stuff is coming back to Google and Facebook. People are working with social platforms, you know, they know to not link out. You, you get punished for linking out. Google has always been about linking out. Facebook and the social platforms has been stay in the platform. Do not leave the platform. That will earn you points. It'll cost you points, not earn you points. Um, so more and more, they want us to spend more and more time on the sites on their sites, not just any sites. And the website is not as relevant anymore. Not the stuff in it, but the actual dot www dot. And Google has been telling us this for years. The micro moments is where it's at. You know, we have a tendency to think about you have a campaign and you have a store and then you have a site and you know the customers pass through these three touch points and then they you know do something, they buy something. Um, but Google is saying, you know, we're doing millions of interactions every day to get through the end game. And those are not in our own channels. A lot of that is, that is happening in other channels, other people's channels. And then you actually even get stuff like this. Where Google themselves are now looking at killing the URL. The reason they're doing is primarily sort of an engineering thing. This colon slash slash is extremely weird. We're actually navigating the internet through 
text-based commands. It's extremely weird when everything else is you know, buttons and, and things. But that's sort of just the first step towards actually not having sites as we know them today. You, did you see yesterday, by the way, that Google killed Google Plus yesterday? It's no more. And I was like, it's still there. On to what is slowly happening now. Um, not just you have a site and you sort of promote it here and then you get, get people to the site or to Google. You actually put your sites on Google or on Facebook. Google have the, the AMP mobile format, uh, which is sort of a fast-loading uh, mobile uh, protocol. Um, Facebook have uh, instant articles, which is sort of the same thing. You build your site on Google's platform or on Facebook's platform directly there, uh, which means that they will la load even faster. You don't have to put it there. Most people choose to put it on their sites, uh, on their servers, because then you get loading time that is much, much better than what sites can do. And we want things to, to move fast. So when I, when I look through the Google search page result page today, if I see uh, a result with you know, this little arrow in, in to, next to it being this is an AMP site, I choose that over a normal mobile site because I know it will be much faster. So the sites are actually moving into the cloud or the platform at home with Google and Facebook. And the reason of course, is, of course, that they want us to do everything there, not just you know, search and find and go somewhere to do the stuff. They want us to pay for things. They want us to find directions. They want us to buy tickets. They want us to do everything there, not just find something go somewhere else. And looking at Google, they are, of course, adding more and more inf uh, functionality towards this. Uh, to the left, the moving part is um, a movie search part of Google. We can actually search for movies, like you can do here, uh, like you always could have done, but now you can actually buy the tickets directly in the search results. Not in Sweden yet, but you can actually, it would be like you can Okay, here you have the SF cinemas, you have the movies, and then you can actually buy the ticket without even, leave it, without even leaving the search results. Google has released, uh, well, several times actually, they're building it, uh, the hotel and flight booking um, functionality, which lets you find hotels and flights. They have, an even, they have a complete tour guide. You can actually know what to do when you get to places as well. But here you have, okay, this is the hotels, these are the flights, these are the prices, and then you can book hotels and buy the flight tickets here. You don't have to leave the, the Google results page to go to sites, not even like booking.com or the other aggregators. You can actually do it here. And of course, not only Google, Google is doing this. Like I said, this is Google and Facebook who are looking more and more alike. You can, uh, both these companies have the ability to upload your, at least part of your product catalog to their platforms and display here. So you have a feed and you get your product listings here and you know, Google or Facebook pick some of it and puts it here in the ads. That's most relevant for the people searching for it. And then you're starting to get things like this. This is, of course, in, in the US, like people who have been there, they're a bit ahead of us. Uh, this is the Google search page without even doing a search. This is you know, going to google.com and you get this. We're used to you know, the white, white, big white window with this, the search bar. This is what you're getting now. And this is starting to look an awful like a news feed looking a lot like the Facebook newsfeed. And the content here is stuff that is relevant to you. Articles, uh, clips, movies, news, whatever. That is relevant to you based on what you do and what you've done and what you bought and everything else, just like Facebook is doing it. More and more of this is coming here. Uh, one of the biggest changes actually that 
Google did this year was changing the sort of next page from a horizontal uh, version, you know, that is a computer, you go to page two, page three, page no one goes to page two, but you could go to page two. Um, they changed it to a vertical flow. And this is why I get this. Because on computers we hate scrolling, scrolling is bad. In mobiles we love scrolling, scrolling is fun. We love scrolling. Uh, this is what Google is adjusting to. And the reason is, of course, that Google have realized that they have a sucky business idea and Facebook has a much better, much better idea because Google's idea was getting people to you, serve them, and then they leave you. You le let the customers leave. That's sort of kind of stupid because what they've realized, both Facebook and Google, is the most important cur currency online today is probably time. Spent time. Because if we spend time in a platform, we're more likely to actually do things. See ads, buy things, do things, look at more content, look at even more content. In the beginning of sort of the di now digital is everything, but the, in the beginning you talked a lot about you do digital because you, you want to either kill time or save time. And Facebook has sort of been about killing time. Getting the news feed, flipping through it, because when I grew up, there were like 20 minutes between the buses. And when there was like 20 minutes to bus, you sort of stood there for 20 minutes and waited for the bus. Now you see, okay, next bus, one minute. Oh, God, one minute. You start flipping through the news feed. We have no patience at all. But, like I said, these two giants are sort of starting to merge. And Facebook now actually wants, while we're there killing time, they want to build functionality that lets us save time. You can find the hairdresser or buy your tickets or buy your movies, tickets or whatever you want to do on Facebook while you're flipping through the newsfeed because you're there. Google, on the other hand, want to do it the other way around because Google has been about saving time. Now they want to keep you there. So all of a sudden, Google is about you know, helping us kill the time they save us. Because the most important part is getting people to stay. And that means that this is starting to happen. Google has sort of been you know, making it, this is of course a simplification, but Google is a lot about intent. Do something, you get there because you want to do something. Facebook has been, I don't know what I want to do. But, it, you know, let me do something. So people working with social media has you know, become experts at engagement, getting people to stay, getting them to actually interact with your content. Google has been, you know, okay, here's, the, here's where you want to do, here's where you want to go. There you go. What this means, probably, in the long run, is that we're actually doing more and more SEO on the social platforms, like Facebook and more and more working with engagement as part of SEO on Google. Like you know, you saw the, the entire news feed where you're going through articles. These are of course meant to keep you there, to read more stuff. How do you do that on Google? Rather than just letting people find stuff and leave. Okay, so I've killed off the site. Let's kill off the next thing, people. This isn't as bad as it looks. This is not about the robot uprising. Uh, so it, it sounds worse than it is. But let's talk about this. Again, cute robots. That's me. And this is my Ula bot. The Ula bot doesn't exist yet. So if anyone can build it for me, please let me know. I want this. Um, this is me. And then I get the idea to, hey, it's time for a vacation. Uh, and that's means, you know, starting to Google. Where do I want to go? What's the be best price is? Talking to friends, of course. Uh, and then find a hotel, find the price, find the level rental car, etc., etc. Or I call on the Ulabot to help me. And the Ulabot says, yeah, sure, fine, I'll do it while you go to work. Uh, and the good thing about uh, the Ulabot is that Ulabot knows everything about me, of course. A bit like Google today, but sort of times 10. 
It knows what flu shots I've had. It knows my allergies. It knows what kind of hotels I like, the food I like, which direction I want my balcony, etc., etc., etc. So the Ula bot starts talking to all the other bots, all the other booking.com bots. Um, and since the Ula bot knows all this about me, it can actually start asking the questions to the bots. Okay, this is the list of requirements. Who gets to meet them? Who has given me the best price for the best hotel that exactly matches what I want and the dates I want to go? And what, by the time I get home from work, I actually have my vacation. Everything is done. Everything is probably al already paid for. So I actually don't do any of the search myself. Because I don't want to. Some people do, but I don't. I just want to sort of get the vacation as fast as possible. This is also starting to happen right now. This is from earlier this year, um, where Microsoft and Amazon have started cooperating with their digital assistants, they can actually talk to each other. So you can actually get Cortana to do stuff and tell Alexa to do it. It's not that good now, yet, of course. Uh, it's really, really sort of ish, but they're getting there. So I can actually get a bot, one assistant, to start going off talking to other assistants, other bots do things and get back to me with the result, and not just an answer or reply, but with sort of a whole vacation booked. Alexa is taking it a step further. They sort of, not there yet, but they're now working on uh, skills, Alexa skills, that is sort of, you know, apps for Alexa, the voice assistant uh, of Amazon. So it can actually use other skills. For instance, I book a movie ticket and it's late, it's like, you know, 20 minutes until the movie starts. Alexa finds a, sort of an Uber skill as well. And it can ask me, hey, do, do you want me to buy, to book your taxi right now, an Uber right now, so you get to the movie in time? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Do it for me. And that's not, I don't have to tell Alexa, okay, use this skill to do it. Alexa finds the relevant skill among all the skills there is. So right now, what you need is the Uber skill, and I couldn't book a taxi for you, or book an Uber. Is that fine? Yes, please do it. This is happening right now. So you don't have to do the work. You just send sort of your bots or your assistants off to do your work. And <laughs> let's see what's going to happen now. The, now it's time for my clickbait heading because, of course, what's, what the only thing left now is search and let's say no more search. This is sort of what I've been building up to, as you probably understand by now. So what do I mean by this? Well, that find will replace search. Am I splitting hairs now here? Oh boy, yes I am. Uh, but then again, so is Google. Google's talking about findability and find. When Google talks about findability, it's either you know, make your site easy to be found or make it easy to find the search. What I'm talking about is that stuff will actually find us before we need it. Before we even know that we want to do something or have to search. Again, Google is, of course, doing the, uh, this already, has been doing for quite some time. They're trying to predict our next move. This is nothing new. Google has been working on this for years. What's happening now is Google is pulling more and more data from us, not just how we searched, but Google is now pulling all the kinds of data it has, what we bought, what we've done, where we traveled, where we've been, etc., to help us predict what we're going to search for. Back to this one. This is the hotel booking functionality uh, from Google. When it comes to flights, Google have actually started predicting delays. Google is looking at you know, tons and tons of data because Google has tons and tons of data, uh, like history, weather patterns, uh, the likeliness of you know, there being a traffic jam or whatever. 
And if 80% of all these things that Google is looking at comes true, then Google will tell you that your flight will be delayed before it has been delayed. So you know that your flight that you're about to take in like a couple of hours will be delayed. 80% certainty. So you don't even have to start looking for, will my flight be delayed? Google will tell you, your flight will be delayed. And probably by how much. Facebook is doing the same thing, of course. Uh, their, their ad part is looking more and more towards predicting what you want to do before you, want, you know that you want to do it. So you can actually buy ads that are sort of predicted, predictable ads. Um, that was a horrible word, probably. Uh, so the ads will try to guess where you're going before you actually know that you want to do it. For instance, they know Google or Facebook knows when you're about to break up or fall in love before you do. Because it looks at how you interact with other people, what words you use, and if you're sort of using, if two people are using sort of we're about to fall in love-ish words, then you might start getting more, see more and more f updates from that person. Because Google thinks that, or Facebook thinks that, hmm, you're, I think you're too about to fall in love. Let's sort of nudge you towards each other. And the other way around, the breakup words start appearing. So Facebook will know that you're about to break up before you're even certain that, or maybe even haven't started thinking about breaking up. Alibaba, the Amazon of China, have uh, launched an IE copywriter, AI copywriter, uh, that is you know, typing tons and tons of lines of ad copy, and it's pretty much doing all the copy for their e-commerce sites. And they're like doing a million of these. What is it, a second, a day? Just creating content, and that's a lot of on-the-fly content creation, adjusted specifically to the person finding the stuff. And then you have more from Alibaba using bra sizes to predict your shopping habits. This is okay, so what does that have to do with anything? Well, you start, if you start to see correlations somewhere, use them. Somewhere along the way, Alibaba found something about bra sizes and knows what you're going to shop and not just you know, what kind of bra size you wear, but other shopping habits you will have as well. And here, they're actually starting having you know, smart mirrors in the toilet queue because, hey, you're just standing there. Why not sort of do, let you do stuff? This is a micro moment. This is more and more turning into, you can actually shop there. And what you get on the screens here is, of course, content or products personalized for you based on who you are. Because they're, of course, also using face recognition. So they know that you are standing there looking at it. And you get to see stuff based on what you are most likely about to buy. So without you even knowing that you have to buy this, you'll start seeing those things appearing. Here as well, just in the toilet queue. Again, back to, Ale uh, to Alexa, who recently, like a month ago, released Alexa Hunches, which is Alexa's way of predicting your behavior. It learns through machine learning what you usually do, and then it starts suggesting based on that, of course. Things like, hey, you're going to bed. The lights on the porch are still on. Do you want me to turn them off? Yes, please. You don't have to ask, are the lights on? Yes, I know they're on. They probably shouldn't be. Let's turn them off. So, to sum up, now that I've killed off everything that you're working with, <laughs> sorry for that, um, a quick recap of what I've been talking about. Uh, what we're actually doing here, we're entering a post.com world. I don't know if that is a word, but again, it is now. Uh, where websites, www, is not as relevant anymore because there are tons and tons of other places you can do stuff. And the thing is, even more than before, you have to be where the customer is. Again, a website is like a physical store, a place where the customer must come to you. We don't want to do that. We want to do things on our terms. We, we have to be where the customers are even more than before, and that means also in the physical offline world. 
but will more and more be the target audience. Because again, if we sort of, if I'm sending my Ula bot off to get me my um, holiday planning or my vacation, book my trip for me, then all of a sudden it's not a person who will be receiving the information and who will sort of making some kind of logical decision based on it. It will be a bot, and I will sort of trust the bot or the algorithm or whatever it will be. And not in the least, prediction, prediction, prediction and online and offline. SEO has been a lot of online work, but it's spilling more and more out into the physical world. We'll be doing a lot of SEO in the physical world. Optimizing the experience and meeting the customers and getting the customers to get the information be before they know that they need it. So finally, SEO this far? That's been the easy part. Now, today, this is where the fun really starts. And it will be trickier than ever, but it'll be more fun than ever. That's at least what I think. Thank you very much. Yeah.